guys, welcome to this next video. We're going to carry on with chapter 2.8, force vector directed along a line. Um, this is how it looks in the textbook, force vector directed along a line. Okay, so just a bit of background. Um, remember, as I keep saying in almost every video, um, if we've got uh, a bunch of forces, often what we want to do is we we either want to calculate the resultant force or we want to obtain components of that force um, and in order to do this or, or, we, yeah, or we want to multiply um, two forces uh, to get um, components etc the point is we want to carry out some vector algebra on forces and, um, and in three dimensions it is very beneficial for us to convert our forces into Cartesian vector notation. Okay. Now, what we've done before is if we if we have a force, um, say there's a force F in two-dimensional space, and um, we want to convert into say Cartesian vector form. What do we normally need? Well, we need, a, say, a magnitude. I'm just making that up. Say it's 100 Newton. And then what else do we need? We need an angle. So remember that force is a vector, right? And so and a vector has both a magnitude and a direction, OK? And um, so by looking at this, we are given a magnitude and we're given a direction. And using trigonometry, we're able to convert this into fxi plus fyj. Okay, so that all the information there then allows us to convert into Cartesian vector form. Well, that was chapter 2.4. Okay, then we saw in chapter 2.5 that in three-dimensional space, three-dimensional space, if we had some force there. Say now again, it's a force with a magnitude of 100 Newton, but we want to uh, rewrite it or represent it in Cartesian vector notation, which looks something like this, fxi plus fyj plus fzk Newton. Um, we had one of two ways. The first one was that we had, say, we, we had our co um, coordinate direction angles, alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, and then we were able to use these to determine our three components. Or, again, also in chapter 2.5, we would have, say, a force F, but instead of the, uh, the information given to us in coordinate direction angles, we were given information in terms of what's known as the azimuth, which is that angle, and then the transverse angle. So the difference was that these angles were then the angles between the, 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 the vector and the positive axes, whereas the angles that were given here are the angle between the, essentially between the, the vector and either the positive z axis, or we were given an angle between this force and the xy plane, and then we were given an angle between this xy projection and the x and y axes. Okay, but anyway, that was in a previous video. The point I'm trying to make is that we are, remember the big picture is that we are trying to convert these forces into Cartesian vector form. And what we were given in two dimensions, we were given angles, magnitudes and angles, and we converted it into Cartesian vector notation. And in three-dimensional space, we were given um, these uh, coordinate direction angles or azimuth and transverse angles, and we were able to convert it into, into this form. Now, <clears throat> in chapter 2.8, chapter 2.8, okay? Well, I've already written it here. Another, another way that forces are represented, for example, in here we have magnitude and an angle. Another way that forces can be represented is, say now you've got two points, say point A and point B, and this force is acting along the line of that of the line passing through those two points. So, 
That's why this chapter is called Force Vector Directed Along a Line. Okay? So again, say now we have a force of 100 Newton. We've got a magnitude, but we want to convert it into Cartesian vector notation. So um, with these, we had angles. With this, we've got two points. So we, um, we've got the magnitude now, right? But how do we determine the direction? How do we determine the direction which will allow us to write it in Cartesian vector notation? Well, if you looked at the previous video, you'll see that the first step I need in order to convert this force, which only is given to me as a magnitude, the first step to convert this into Cartesian vector notation is to calculate the position vector. Okay? So a position vector, remember a position vector is simply a vector telling me how to get from point A to point B. You can go and look at the, at the previous videos and, um, and also just read in your textbook. Okay? So a position vector gives, gives me a direction. Remember, this is also a Cartesian vector form. It gives me the direction from A to B. Let's just write it out just. So position vector is, is given as R. A, B means position vector R from A to B, and it is calculated, okay, so A has uh, coordinates A, X, A, Y, A, Z, and B has coordinates B, X, B, Y, B, and B, Z. So R, A, B is calculated as B, X minus A, X, I direction, plus by minus ay in the j direction plus bz minus az in the k direction. And what are the units of, of this position vector? Meters. I emphasized this very much in the previous, um, previous videos. So the position vector is in meters. So now I'm going to get something like this. R a b is equal to r. I'm just going to simplify it by saying r x plus R Y plus R Z meters, okay? Again, what does this tell me? What does my position vector tell me? It tells me if I'm traveling from A to B, how far do I need to go in the X direction, in the Y direction, and in the Z direction to get from A to B? And remember, it is distance traveled. So how far in meters do I go in the X, how, and then how far in, in meters do I go in the Y and in the Z to get from A to B? Very good. So now, so now that we just had a quick recap on the position vector, I want to come back to the big picture. We are trying to convert this force into Cartesian vector notation. So what do we need? We need to multiply this magnitude with a vector. Okay? Let that sink in. We need to multiply this force with a vector so that this force will then have a specific direction. Right now, if I say to you um, the force acting on, on this object is 100 Newton, well, I'll say, well, that's great, but that is really quite meaningless because we do not have a direction. If you tell me there's one force acting of 100 Newton and then there's another force of 50 Newton, that is really, it, it's almost a meaningless statement because, because forces are vectors. If I have two vectors that are not acting in, a, in the same direction, then I need to add them up um, using a vector addition. So, I, in order to convert this force into Cartesian vector notation, I need to multiply it by a vector that's going in that di in the same direction. So what do we have here as our, our position vector puts us on the right track, okay? So our position vector is a vector that's pointing in the direction of that force, okay? But now, if I were to say to you, okay, now I've got my F, which equals 100, okay? my force, the magnitude of my force is 100, and now I've got, a, I've, I've got a vector. I've got a position vector RAB, which gives me the correct direction. It is, a, it is a vector in the direction. Then if I ask you, what is the problem 
with me multiplying the 100 Newton by this position vector, am I not giving this 100 Newton the correct direction? What if I say F times R A B? Okay? F magnitude of 100 times the position vector R A B. Am I not going to give this 100 Newton the correct direction and therefore um, write it in Cartesian vector notation? Well, the answer is yes, absolutely, you are going to give that force the correct direction and you're going to represent it in Cartesian vector notation. The problem is that RAB, there's two problems. A position vector RAB, number one, um, does not have a magnitude of one. Okay, I'm going to say RAB, that's the magnitude of, of position vector, is, does not have a magnitude of one. Why is that important? Because what's happening is, if f is 100, and I multiply by position vector RAB, I'm actually also multiplying by the magnitude of this vector, which is what? It's Rx squared plus Ry squared plus Rz squared square root. Remember that that's the magnitude of RAB. So if, this, if the magnitude of this position vector is 10 or 15 or whatever, then what's actually happening is, if I multiply 100 by this position vector, I am giving it the correct direction, but I'm changing the magnitude. I'm changing the magnitude. And so therefore, it's no longer a force equal to 100. It's a force of 100 multiplied by the magnitude of this position vector. So that's the first problem. The second problem, okay, is that I have units of meter. My units are meter. So if I carry out this calculation, I'm going to get Newton meter. Okay? So I'm after Newton. Okay? So I, I really hope this is, this is making it um, clear. Again, I need to multiply this force, this which has a magnitude of 100, by a vector pointing from A to B so that I can give this force a direction. So I start with the position vector, but the problem I have with position vector is although it's the correct direction, it has a magnitude other than 1. So if I multiply the 100 with that position vector, number 1, I change the magnitude of 100, and number 2, I, I'm actually multiplying by another unit, meters. So what is the solution to this? The solution is that we need to calculate the unit vector UAB which is equal to the position vector RAB divided by its magnitude which is simply Rx in the I over the magnitude of that vector let's write it like that I plus RYJ over RAB plus R Z K over R A B. Now, now I ask you, what is the magnitude of U A B? It's one. The magnitude of the unit vector is one. And what <clears throat> what are the uh, units? The units are dimensionless. Okay. So, as, a, as just to end this off, if I now take that 100 Newton, which is the magnitude of that force, and I multiply it by the unit vector AB, I am not changing the magnitude. I'm not changing the magnitude because I'm multiplying by 1, and I'm not adding on a, a unit, meters, because a, a unit vector is dimensionless. So... Just to end off here, F in Cartesian vector form is then equal to the magnitude of that force times a unit vector in the direction of that force. The unit vector is calculated by first determining 
the position vector and then dividing by the magnitude of that position vector. Okay? So I hope that makes it clear. I hope that helps. Again, any questions, you can email me or you can put some comments in the comment section. Thanks, guys.